Hey there, everybody, and welcome to our online devotional series we call Grandfather's Box. Um, got something for you in the box, and uh, as always, we'll make you guess what it is. Um, this is associated with a guy that is probably best known throughout history for being the one to condemn Jesus to death. You have any idea who that could be? You might be thinking about uh, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. And if that's who you're thinking about, you're right. If you didn't know this, in the first century Greco-Roman, Babylonian era, it was not uncommon for governors to actually mint their own coins. And this is, get a little close for you, an authentic coin minted, one of, I think, only two or three different styles, by Pontius Pilate. Isn't that kind of crazy? And to the best of my knowledge, this is authentic. Um, but the reason I, I kind of want to share this with you all today is because... Well, first of all, I'm a little tardy to the party when it comes to the whole Easter thing with this series, aren't I? Uh, but there's something that caught me about this as I was studying um, Pontius Pilate this last Easter that never quite hit me in this way before. If you're familiar with the story of Easter or what's known as the Passion Story, that is everything that happened from the moment Jesus began Holy Communion through the crucifixion, there's actually two moments in the Passion Story where water is used to wash. One of them you may know is when Jesus washed his disciples' feet uh, as a symbol of servanthood, of saying, look, I, I, I didn't come to, to just be the center of attention and everyone do whatever I say, but I came to serve and help and love on others. The other one was actually done by Pilate, Pontius Pilate. Um, and, and what happened was when uh, the Jewish religious leaders brought Jesus to Pilate, um, they brought him there to be condemned and, and crucified. The reason why is because at this time, the Jewish community was under Roman oppression. So according to Roman law, they couldn't legally crucify or kill Jesus. So it had to be okayed through the Roman government and the local um, Roman representative was Pontius Pilate. Well, this was during what's known as the Jewish festival of Passover. And Pilate had this personal um, habit, he had this tradition, if you will, of, of appeasing the crowds by releasing one prisoner of their choice. And so there was this notorious uh, bandit that, that was in prison. His name is... Um, Barabbas. As a matter of fact, one of the Gospels tells us that his full name was um, Jesus Barabbas. Um, and, and Barabbas was in jail for being a part of an insurrection uh, up against the government and killing a man in the middle of the insurrection. And so Pilate says to the people, who do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus, the one that's called King of the Jews? Well, what you need to know is right before this, in Matthew chapter 27, it mentions in all four Gospels, but I'm focusing on Matthew chapter 27 right now. What you need to know is right before this, Pilate interviewed Jesus. Okay? Because he, he needed to know for himself, he needed to be able to answer to his superiors of why he did or did not have this man killed. And... We don't know if Pilate thought Jesus was just a nutcase or if Pilate thought that he was just some guy leading a radical group or whatever, but, but the Bible is very clear in all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Pilate found absolutely no legal precedent to have him killed. The charges that the, uh, the Jewish uh, religious leaders were bringing up on him was that he was calling himself a king and therefore the Roman government... Um, says there is only one king, the king of Rome, um, the emperor at the time. And so they're saying, oh, he's trying to rebel against the emperor, but Pilate finds no reason to kill him. But now Pilate's left with his decision. What do I do? 
I have all these people who are trying to cause an uproar, a problem, and I find no legal precedent to have this guy killed. I can either cause problems and there be a big uproar and, and probably even a riot and do the morally right thing, the legally right thing, or I can condemn an innocent man to die and not have to deal with the problems. And, and for you and I, this may seem like such an easy, easy thing to say when we're not in the middle of it. But y'all, when we're in the middle of a difficult moment, when we're in the middle of an unsure moment of what to do next, we know the moral right thing to do, but it's, it means sacrifice, it means discomfort, it means becoming unpopular, it means people maybe even get mad at us. It doesn't always make it the easy thing to do. Check this out. From Matthew chapter 27, let me read this for you. This is what happens next, starting at verse 19. It says, While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders per persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. They didn't have a good answer. They were just angry and wanted to be a mob. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting. He took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Look, just because we deny that we have responsibility doesn't mean we don't actually have responsibility. Just because we can rationalize the railing away, it doesn't actually move the cliff. This is something that, that we've talked about before. When it comes to morality, when it comes to rationalization of wrong and right, we, we need to recognize not only that we are called to make right decisions, but... Sometimes that those right decisions mean we're going to be very unpopular. I, I, I don't know where you're at. I don't know if perhaps for you right now you are facing a moral dilemma. I don't know if maybe you've just come out of one or, or maybe you're not even close to being in one, but, but this is a word for the future. Look, just because it's the right thing to do doesn't mean it's the easy thing to do. We teach children this all the time, but for us... As adults, as Christians, do we own this? Do we live into this? Are we willing to, as Jesus said, take up our cross daily and follow him, go through suffering and pain and, and even let something of us die for the right reasons? To let pride die, to let ego die, to let what other people think of us and our image to let it die if it means something better is done. I don't know if this helped you today. I hope it has. It's a word that I have to own myself to. We all, as Christians, need to own. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for a love that has our back. We thank you for a love that doesn't give up on us. We pray for strength, peace, resilience, and clarity when we are faced with the hard decisions. It's so easy to judge Pontius Pilate. But if we were in his shoes, we need to ask ourselves if we would have wrestled with the same questions. <sighs> Lord, I pray over my brothers and sisters here watching this. I pray that, that this would be helpful. I pray, Lord, that you would guide us in exploring what is right and then having the strength to do it. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
I love you. Stay safe. God's peace. And I'll see you later for our very last episode of Grandfather's Box.